In this screencast, we're going to look at the chemical potential and its dependence on pressure for just a single component. And we're going to further narrow it down by just comparing solid and liquid and therefore getting an idea of how equilibrium between the two changes we change pressure. So the first thing we have to do is look at the equation that relates chemical potential which for a single component is the same as Gibbs free energy. So the idea is that the differential change in Gibbs free energy is related to the volume, differential pressure change, entropy, and temperature change. And so this is where mu is the chemical potential. And this is true, remember, for a single component. And what we're going to do is look at constant temperature. So we're going to look at an isothermal system and just look at the temperature dependence, which means we're setting this term to zero. And therefore, the change in chemical potential is just volume times a change in pressure. Volume is a positive number. This says the chemical potential increases as we raise the pressure. We're going to start off looking at water. And the important thing for water that's going to affect this is that the volume of a solid, namely volume of solid ice, is greater than the volume of liquid water. And so therefore, let's look at what this means in terms of applied of chemical potential versus pressure. So we're applying chemical potential versus pressure. A couple of things to point out. One, this is over a narrow pressure range, so I'm showing that Chemical potential is linear. It's a pretty good approximation. Liquids and solid volumes aren't going to change very much with pressure. And then the solid line, so these lines correspond to the stable phase. In other words, the lower chemical potential is going to be what we have at equilibrium. So at low pressure, this dashed line says this is what the chemical potential for liquid would be if we were at this pressure. But since a solid has a lower chemical potential, that's stable. Now as we raise the pressure, because the slope, right, the slope of the solid line, the orange, is greater than the slope of the liquid, the blue, and that's because of this. Volume solid greater than the volume of liquid, and we're just looking at chemical potential change with pressure. Well, the transition point, of course, between solid and liquid corresponds to the melting point. So what we conclude from this is as we raise the pressure, ice will melt at a given temperature. Right? We convert the solid into the liquid. And so you'll notice on this diagram that it's labeled as the temperature is less than the triple point temperature. So we're looking at this, we said isothermal conditions, and we're looking at temperature less than triple point. And the question is, why is that? The easiest way to see this is to look at a pressure temperature diagram. Well, this is a pressure temperature diagram for water, but notice the pressure scale is a log scale. So we don't see much change in temperature with pressure, and it's hard to see on this scale but this line actually has a negative slope. And let me exaggerate it on the diagram just to demonstrate what I mean. So if I were to expand the temperature scale, we'd see that slope is negative. And when we pick a temperature, we have a solid. As we raise the pressure, eventually... I could draw that vertical. We cross that solid liquid line, become liquid. That's what our diagram on the left says. Triple point temperature is here. And so what we're saying is the temperature has to be lower than the triple point because with this negative slope, that phase transition between solid and liquid has to be a temperature less than the triple point temperature. So we can see how these two diagrams relate to each other and demonstrate that as we raise the pressure, we go from a solid to liquid for water. If we look at most other species, for example, let's look at ethanol, the reverse is true. 
So on the left is the plot we've been looking at for chemical potential versus pressure for water. On the right is the equivalent plot for ethanol. And notice now that the slope for the liquid line is greater than the slope for the vapor line. And so this means that the volume for the liquid, this is molar volume, is greater than the volume for the solid for ethanol. Therefore, again, the lower chemical potential is stable. At low pressures, we have liquid. As we raise the pressure for ethanol, we're going to convert the liquid to the solid, the completely opposite behavior from what we see for water. And that means if we were to go back, and I won't show a pressure temperature diagram for ethanol, but we can look at the water line. So let me draw an exaggerated solid liquid line on the pressure temperature diagram, what we'd expect for ethanol. So for ethanol, the slope is positive. And this shows us that if we had a liquid, and we started here with a liquid, and we raise the pressure, we're going to convert it across the line, become a solid. Of course, that's what this says. Notice this also says the temperature is greater than triple point temperature, the opposite of water, because again, if I go back and look at this diagram, here's the triple point temperature. Because of that positive slope, we have to be greater than triple point temperature when we're looking at ethanol solid liquid equilibrium.